Welcome back, Watchbangers, to the Berlin Time channel. I apologize for the bad lighting. It is a bit dark outside. And even though it is still afternoon. And I just came back from the flea market where I found this little treasure with this pretty little flex pan which I already opened. And I saw it just lying around in a pile of other like jewelry and things nobody wanted. But before we continue, it is three o'clock in Berlin. And yeah, let's start the video. Now, so I did say that I found this in a pile of jewelry. I went to the guy, he said, you know, I'll take 24. And I was like, come on, it's a watch without a stem. You know, it's a bit old, you know, I ain't paying 20. And he was like, okay, fine, 10. So I paid 10 bucks and got this little stunner. So aside from the missing stem here, of course, let's just see if it runs. Mm, doesn't seem so. The second hand isn't ticking. The back is very pretty though. Yeah, you can see the, the logo. This is a Junghans watch. It's a pretty famous um, German brand known for their Baja style watches. They are hella expensive though. And yeah, I'm dancing because I'm happy to have found this watch. <laughs> now let's open our toolbox um, and let's get cracking. We'll start by prying open the back case and I'll do this by just inserting a screwdriver here and pressing it open, fair and square. There we go. Let's see if there are any markings. There are. Let's see what year is this. This is 81. Okay, someone has touched this watch in 1981. Crazy. Uh, and all of a sudden, the watch did start moving, which is really weird. Um, so, um, yeah, nevertheless, we'll just get it out of the case. This is from a line called the Trilastic Movement. And you can see the three little stems which hold the movement in the case. And that's why it's called Tree. And let's just flip the movement here so we can make it fall out. Perfect. And let's focus our attention on the hands. So we can just take these off. They are a bit beaten up and the loom is missing, but I won't be replacing the loom because I don't know how to do it yet, but I'll definitely post a video on how to do that. And now the rusty seconds hand. Now I do have a replacement for this and why I have that is because I actually had a different video planned with the exact same watch uh, I already had a film and everything, but then I went to the flea market and I found this watch. And the good thing about this is that the dial here is completely, you know, undamaged. It looks absolutely flawless. Or the other one does have some damage, so I'll just mix the parts a bit and yeah, make a nice watch. <laughs> now let's remove the dial holding cl uh, clamp screws and let's take that off here. Nice, nice and stuff. Oh, it does seem like something fell off there. I think it is. Oh, it is the dial screw. Okay, nothing, nothing too bad. Now let's come to the dial. Now I'm just using a Q-tip to rub a little bit down. And yeah, now a general rule on dials is either you can like, you know, rub down the dirt, dirt, or you just have to find a replacement. Now the reason for that is is because dials are very sensitive. They usually have like some sort of enamel coating, and that enamel can, you know get removed by almost anything so any fluid usually you know uh, you know lighter fluid alcohol and i already had some bad experiences on young hand styles as well where you know i was i was innocently cleaning it you know and boom half of the dial just all of a sudden had a different color even if it was like a tiny shade different it was a different kind of color and just ruined you know the 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 optic optic experience and i was like damn I did an oopsie. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just uh, use some Rodiger here. That's also a very good tool to clean down dials. And that's why I'm just happy that this dial is so untouched because I don't, it's just a very well-preserved dial. Um, and I think these watches were produced in the 70s. So, you know, another big prop for surviving 40 years. Um, yeah, so let's rub this down. We do have to be careful though, uh, not to rip off some of the indices or the numbers, but that should be fine there to be honest now let's get the this the numbers on the side that does have a bit more dirt but it should be fine nice now let's just get our dial case and just smack that in there let's take it away now we can start looking at the broken stem which was hidden so the stem wasn't missing it was just broken uh, and let's pull this out here fairly simple and yeah, let's strap it into the movement holder. I must say, I do like the look of this movement. It looks a bit more, you know, bulky, robust. That's the arrow marker, and this is the click. 
for the ratchet for the mainspring you know it works fine very interesting with the blued the blued ratchet um i did do some reading on these and i think uh this blued ratchet was included to give the movement you know a more you know high end look um and yeah it definitely is kind of unique <laughs> if you think about it all right now let's remove the ratchet spring screw and oh looks like it is a bit magnetic okay maybe it's just a screwdriver and let's just remove the spring as well careful that it doesn't fly off into the oblivion there we go lovely now that's the cannon pinion and this mechanism quite interesting this is the lever setting for um setting the time and when the mainspring and usually it's like this little thin strip of metal but here it's like this aperture out of oh damn the spring just flew away but i found it lucky me <laughs> i'm very lucky to have found it and the screw of course and this little dowel thing which i also found on the floor but i'll just use it because this one was missing it now so back to the the whole aperture it has like three wheels uh, and i mean i liked it, it it was definitely something different than the usual, you know, yoke. Now let's lift this up carefully. Hold up. Not that all the wheels fly away. See, there's another wheel there and two other wheels which go underneath it. So one, two, and the reduction wheel. Let's take that. Now the mainspring clutch. And let's flip it around to the back side since the front has been stripped. Now we'll start by removing the balance, of course. Let's screw this off. The screw. And now there's a little slot down there under the balance where you can use the tweezer to pry it up and just slowly, oh, slowly lift it up careful not to damage anything i am a bit afraid because these older german movements do have very very sensitive balances uh the the hair spring is bending a bit too much here one second gotta be careful yeah i think i'll just grab it there pull it out of the pallet fork and just lift it up here perfect nice now we can get to the pallet fork get the screw from the bridge some final unscrewing with the with the with the tweezer and the screw is goodbye now pry up the pallet fork and i don't know if you noticed this but this movement does not have any jewel bearings which is very interesting for example the pallet fork did not have any and i did some research to see if you know maybe maybe the jewel bearings just all fell out um but interestingly enough there are two versions of this movement one with jewel bearings and one without so i think this this kind of movement style just really lies on the older you know older grandfather clock cuckoo clock design where they don't have any jewel bearings just metal on metal and just oil it regularly so yeah but i think we might might get this to work well i'm very confident well i hope so because i still i think i'll plan on giving this to my brother for his birthday um yeah so now we have to loosen that one screw i looked at to release the stem wind uh, the stem releasing screw i guess it just fell out there there it is so you can see it there and now we can lift the main bridge after releasing the screws carefully yep pry it up there we go lovely and get the first wheel the second wheel and the third wheel there's some some grime there i don't even know what that is some white stuff we'll take a look at it in a second and the escapement now for the main plate there is a screw there but i noticed that it was stuck in the main plate and i do not know how to release main plate screws like i don't know how to get them out so i'll just keep it in there and lift this up carefully there we go perfect and now to the mainspring now this mainspring is pretty interesting it has like an interesting arbor there um 
And the first time I opened the Stefan watch, which I already filmed, I was very afraid from doing this, but I think I have the confidence. Now the main plate is done. We can just concentrate on cleaning. And now this is my, my lighter fluid glass jar and it is dirty, so we need to change it. Now this is my glass where we can put in the lighter fluid because in Germany we cannot just, you know, chuck it. We have to give it to specialized um, disposal units. <laughs> and yeah, so I'll just put it in this big glass here. You can see all the dirt and grime come out as well. Make sure that every drop is out so we don't have any contaminated new lighter fluid. Close this up and put this away. And now we just use, you know, the lighter fluid and just fill this bad boy up again so we can use it to clean our parts. Now, there we go. That's the last of it, I think. Now we can just throw this can away as well. Yep, nice, great. And lit it up. And that's done. Our clean lighter fluid has been exchanged. Yet again, I am cleaning all the parts. Um, as I said, first we put it in a bath of lighter fluid. Let it soak there for a while because lighter fluid acts as a degreaser, so it just gets rid of all all the grime, all the oiled oils, the spoiled oils, the <laughs> the dried oils, and yeah, you can. Then I just put it into a bath of or a rinse of isopropyl alcohol, which just you know rinses off all these parts. I've cleaned 50 parts in total; three were replaced, um, and yeah, that's about it. It is quite some work. I think this takes 30, 40 hours, uh, 30, 40 minutes, <laughs> depending on how fast you work. And this is the the one, I think the third wheel we saw there, which had that grime there and the cleaning did not get rid of it. So I had a replacement. And this, as you can see, does not have any grime. And I just replaced it just to be sure, you know, replacements always ensure the best quality, to be honest. Now let's look at the mainspring. Let's remove this interesting pin there. And this is the arbor. Ah, there it is. The mainspring does look like Let's turn, yeah, that's the arbor there. Interesting. And the mainspring does look like it's in a good quality. There's no bends, ticks, so we can just we can just service that. And we do that by pulling it out, of course, as usual. And you know, wiggling our thumbs around so the mainspring will unwind itself because it is under tension in the barrel. And we do have to remember what way this mainspring was wound otherwise when we wind it back in again we might just ruin the whole spring and that's bad because these vintage watches you know they don't have generic springs which you can usually buy on on you know retail store retailers or wholesale you know sellers so we definitely have to watch out for this there we go it is unwinding slowly and that's the whole mainspring as you can see i'm just cleaning this up with lighter fluid again, then I'm using uh, isopropanol and, you know, looking at the the state of the paper slips I'm using, this is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and to lubricate, I'm using Mobius A200 to just, you know, give it a bit of lubrication and some final lubrication touches with the oiler. Of course, we will oil the, the, the barrel as well. Uh, this is not a automatic watch, but I'm just still putting some A200 on the barrel walls. And now I'm just winding the mainspring back inside. Yet again, I'm thinking about which way it was. <laughs> it's always a big, big thinking game. But I think I got the right way. And here we go. Um, do excuse my focusing skills. This is on automatic, so I can't really, you know, fo focus manually while I'm doing this. Nice. And this is how it should look like. And then, you know, add a few drops of oil here and there afterwards just to make sure that it's been oiled properly maybe i'm just overdoing it as well and of course oil the arbor and this is where the little hook slips into the mainspring and tightens it and now we can just place this on there and just press it on in the second there we go nice and that's the mainspring done perfect and of course oh not yet and the little pin which it the little pivot that is it. now the mainspring is done <laughs> okay no oh, perfect that's the Jung Hans Caliber 93 mainspring serviced. Great. Looks absolutely lovely and ready to use. Oh, there we go. And let's take this away. Now we come to the balance. As you can see, the balance does move a bit on its own, but you know, to ensure the best balancing quality and movement, we can just oil and clean the jewels. So we get rid of the little, little 
lid here for the capsules. Use Rodico to get the capsule off. There you go. And we can use another Rodico stick to try to get this jewel. It doesn't want to get out actually. One sec, let's use, oh. Yeah, this is the part where I broke the balance, sadly, because I pressed Rodico on too hard and the hairspring got stuck to it and then it just ruined it. So I'm using a replacement balance. <laughs> um, so we're just repeating the process. Get the clamp off, get the capsule off and the jewel bearing itself. And we can just separate these here. You can see both of them look absolutely stunning. Yeah, the broken hairspring does leave a bitter aftertaste, but good thing I had a replacement. Now we do the same thing on the back. We remove the cover. Now we remove the capsule and the bearing. Separate these two. And now we can just pop both the main spring and the main, you know, the main plate into the, the lighter fluid bath and give them the cleaning cycle. Now, to reassemble, we just put the jewel back in carefully, press it in correctly, then we oil with Mubius 9010 and place the capsule back on, make sure it's all tightly snug, and then we put the cap back on. Careful, these do tend to fly away, <laughs> so just carefully use the tweezer here and pry it into the slot nice and looks like it's a good fit here as well and now we just repeat the whole process on the top so jewel in then we oil with the same oil now a lot of people do use this the other way they oil the capstone put the jewel on it and then put that into the mainspring um i think i need to start doing that tactic because technically that is the more viable and logical way but i'm just stubborn i guess uh, so yeah i'll start doing that i think from the next few videos on now and now that's done and if we give the mainspring a little, a little stir now you can see that it is swinging much better and much wider so that definitely did some work we are at the rear assembly process so these yellow areas is where the mainspring had some more contact with the main plate, that's why I oiled it up with some HP1300 before putting the main plate. Now the escapement, of course, let's make sure that it's on a jewel. The second wheel, which we replaced. Just make sure that that's a fit as well. Letting it fall into the pivot hole. There we go. Perfect. Then the third wheel between the second and the escapement wheel and the first wheel. And of course, I oil the, the gears and the contact points of these wheels as well. I just don't show them on camera because I just don't know how to film it. <laughs> now we can put on the, ma the main bridge here on the plate to cover the gear train. Let's make sure that all the pivots are aligned um, because I don't want to break any pivots or any other person wouldn't want to break any pivots, of course. And let's just make sure that, you know, the, oh, it's a bit stuck. Let me just readjust this. There we, now, okay, now if we turn it, it should look like this. Every gear should turn nicely and smoothly. And now we can just screw it down just to be sure that nothing falls out of its place. And the, the gears and the gear teeth, which I mentioned before are oiled with, um, Mubius 910 or HP 1300. To be honest, I don't really have it. I don't have a like clear cut rule. I'm not even sure if those need to be oiled, but I just do it. Now we can cover up the main spring with the main spring bridge. On one side, we can put in the screw and the other side, of course, is sadly damaged because the screw has popped off there. Oh. Yes, because the screw has popped off and that's why we have to keep it shut. Now we oil the center wheel with 
and every other pivot with Mobius 9010. Make sure that they have a good drop there to maximize efficiency when turning. And the mainspring gets a HP 1300. And from the back side, of course, or the front side, depending on how you look at it, it'll get the same treatment. And the pivots there also get Mobius 9010. And turn it once more just to be sure that every oil is spread evenly and nicely but it turns absolutely smoothly like butter now we can put in the pallet fork and cover that up the pallet fork is of course oiled as well with maybe 9415 and thinking back at it i should have replaced the main plate i'm not sure why i did not do it because the the, f the failure to completely screw down the mainspring is quite a risk in a watch. So maybe I'll come back to that at some point. Now we can screw down the pallet fort bridge after checking that the pallet fort is aligned correctly. And now we can come to the front part where we start with the spring, the ratchet, the ratchet click, excuse me, and screwing it down. This blued click is my first ever blued component so i am very proud of having discovered it when, when i opened the watch um but i hope i can see more high quality parts in the future now now we put the click spring and a fun fact is that these blued components aren't really anything special they're just heated at a certain temperature which gives the metal a different coloring and yeah that's basically it you can also do this by hand I didn't think about bluing some watch hands uh, manually, but I opted against it because the risk is pretty high. Now we can check if it works. Yep, we'll give a few springs on the mainspring and let's see if the pallet fork reacts accordingly. It should click from one side to another. There we go. And the other side as well. Yep, so it just has to snap from one side to other. Now, after that function is done, we can set in the balance wheel again which we replaced sadly again <laughs> and make sure that it's aligned correctly and turn the main there we go it started ticking it by itself it increased in speed a bit the amplitude looks pretty fine as well and we will just have to see what what the time graph says afterwards but i'm very very pleased now we screw this down as well and turn completely to the front of the movement where we put in the one stem lever on the side. Of course, we don't forget that the stem lever is connected from the back side through this one stem removal screw. And then after that is screwed down, we can put in the clutch again and insert the stem to make sure that everything is aligned correctly. I just need some wiggle room as well, just push it up, angle it correctly. Oh, I gotta lift, lift, there we go, that looks nice, and let's just turn it, see? And now we can start oiling for the assembly, so this is some HP 1300 for the translation wheel some HP 1300 for the cannon pinion and this time I'm gonna assemble this from the back way around so not with the yoke but from the top so we start with the minute then the cannon pinion then the reduction wheel the hour wheel and now we come to the yoke which we also oil with HP 1300 here and let me just but that actually there's an easier way to do this let me just put this down here and just lay that on there that's how we do it perfect and let's take this onto the movement of course we will add the two smaller wheels first and put some hp 1300 there as well just to be sure that it has some lubrication make sure that the adjustment is all right and everything fits and then we can put on the yoke itself this needs some play room, but after finding the sweet spot and putting on the screw, 
we should be able to tighten it down and see how it works after I put it in the final spring here. All right, let's tighten this down. I'm not sure why the screw slit here is not centered. If, every, if anybody knows, gladly put it in the comments. I'm very curious. Now, just make sure the lever fits in its appropriate spot and oil that with some Mubius A200, which is a thicker grease, which is used for, you know, friction points, especially in these keyless works. And now we can put in the final screw at the top. Make sure that, you know, your finger is covering it so it doesn't fly around. Very important. These tend to just get lost and you'll never find them in your life again. All right, let's snap that in there. And that should be it. Nice. Put in the screw. Unscrew that bad boy down. It should adjust accordingly as you screw it down. Perfect. And now we can see the works in its motion. That's the arrow setting on the first position. And if you put it on neutral, it will wind the mainspring. Great. That was a great job. Now we can still oil that little lever there just to be sure. And now we can get to the dial montage again. Just press it on to the dial feed slots. And I have to open the screw here so it can fall in correctly. And just press it in. And now we can just close the dial screw again to fixate the dial to the watch movement. The other side, of course, as well. Don't forget that. And now we come to the watch hands. First, the hour hand, of course. This is a bit complicated doing it this way because I'm not. I'm not separating the arrows and just putting it all on 12. That usually is a bit more messier. And I am also using tweezers, which is, I guess, not, not the most ideal way. Since you can slip and just damage the dial, but you know, no pain, no gain. I lift live on the edge <laughs> and just make sure that the arrow hand is synchronized with the minute hand. And then finally add the seconds the seconds hand down there and that should should perfectly work oh it's jumping on again perfect and now just make sure that everything works adjust the time sounds great and now when we press the crown in we can wind the mainspring it's great as well now we can just work on moving work on building the movement back into its case. This is a different case. Um, the start has a silver case, but as I said, I already had a different movement and I would like to have it in a golden case either way because I think it just looks better and classier. So that fits perfectly. So let's take that off there and just drop it in. Of course, we do have to be careful of the trilastic, you know, movement clamps there on the side. So we just have to press that in. They do have a little spring setting which suspends the movement in the dial quite, quite intelligent. Actually, it's a very cool system. I just have to press that in. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit difficult. Just have to make sure that nothing is damaged before using some more force. But I think that should do it in a sec. Uh, almost now there it is. And now we can just screw down the stem again, put it in and make sure that everything's set. before attaching a new acrylic crystal to the case. This is something I just bought online. We're gonna use something called a crystal lift. It's this big claw-like thing. You hook the crystal into a holder and then you use the claw to shrink the edges of the crystal. Um, there you go. So the claws just, you know, grab onto the side and press it down. And then you press the smaller crystal into the right case and then as you expand the jaws the crystal should fall into the right setting let's just open this up again and ah oh, almost i'm not very good at this yet i usually use my hands but it almost works so i just have to finish it up a bit and that's it it has has a new crystal and the watch looks absolutely stunning there we go see the dial looks pretty clean and the crystal of course is also new 
So let's just slap this on the time graph and see what kind of measurements we get. Let's switch it on. Oh, well, this doesn't look too good. It is almost 200 seconds late a day. Um, but this had a pretty simple fix. I noticed that there was some magnetism during working on the watch. So I just um, used my demagnetizer. And after I used that, these were the measurements. Pretty good, actually, for something I didn't have to re-regulate. The only big error is the B error here, which I don't know how to fix because it doesn't have a adjustable stud carrier, which is kind of bad. But I guess I'll just leave it since it doesn't need an automatic anyways to start up. And of course, we will add our signature on the back here. A. Slash two. 21. I don't know why I wrote 21 instead of 22 because I did do this this year. I think I was just, I was just a bit, you know, preoccupied, <laughs> I guess. Now we can just close this watch up with the one pretty watch case, watch back. Um, I did decide not to polish the watch back because I did polish the golden case before off camera, but I just like the bit worn look. I generally like the worn look more on watch cases as long as they're, you know, legible and still in a decent shape and just press it down. And I did decide to give this watch to my, bro my brother. So I bought him a new strap. Now the watch is done and I do have a little pres present packaging in a sense. This is a watch thing I got from the Junghans, the same company which made the watch like 70 years ago or 50 years ago from a different watch I once sent into them. It was a quartz watch. Um, it was, I think, one of the watches which really made me get into uh, watchmaking or watches in general, but I broke the watch and that's why I had to send it in, but they couldn't do anything. So just send it back to me in this pretty case, which is very nice for them because I get to use this, this case now for my brother. And I'll just store it in there until May, I think, when it's his birthday. And yeah, of course I'll do some testing before, but it should work out fine. Close this up and let's just look at the lovely protected watch in a closed case. Now, nah, let's just put it away. Now the obligatory B-roll looks absolutely stunning. Uh, the second hand is really what he liked about the watch. So I think I'll, I definitely, this definitely is the good choice for him. On the wrist looks good. And the next picture looks absolutely stunning. Ooh. This is not edited by the way. And now of course you can, you can have the privilege of watching me clean up all the mess I made. Um, yeah, this was also every job I do here is absolutely chaotic. Um, so don't mind me. <laughs> I also had this tea I drank because I had Corona, um, while doing this, but you know, I didn't finish it. See you guys in the next video.